So in this video, we are going to turn this old school classic Game Boy into a retro arcade machine. Let's go. Now we're playing with power, real Nintendo power. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we're going to do like memory lane for me because I owned this thing back in the day. Like when I was a child, I played a lot with it because this SciTech booster thing was pretty damn awesome. You could make yourself like an yeah, arcade-ish kind of machine, but this thing had a lot of cool features, including boosting your sound. So the name itself makes kind of sense to me. But as a child, I played a lot with it and having it back in the collection is pretty damn awesome. But also a big shout out to my buddy Shane for yeah, giving me the option to review this because I found it on his page because it's a second hand product and he just gave me the option to buy this for a very good deal. I told him I want to make a review for this product because this was pure nostalgia for me because I owned this as a child and yeah, people like him always make me very happy and give me like motivation to make these videos because with retro gaming it's about the passion, nostalgia and not always about the money. But what is all this SciTech booster about? So basically back in the day we could buy a lot of weird stuff for the Game Boy. I also did like this Handy Boy where you have like a weird attachment to it, making it more like a transform. But this thing was more like a really cool piece of hardware. So you're going to get the magnifying glass that comes with built-in lights because yeah, back in the day we didn't have of course the lighter feature that we have now. You can click it open, basically like you can connect your Game Boy with the cable over here for giving it some external juice. Then we're having the option over here for the audio, of course, the on and off switch. We can also like basically open this part up and at the back we had the option to turn it on and off. The only thing I remember is that this thing you needed to basically like pull it out for replacing the games, but that's not a big of a deal. But overall, it was a really cool piece of hardware. I didn't even test it, test it before we're making these videos. So we're going to see if this thing is working. So it would be cool. So at the front, we're just going to get a piece of plastic, which you can see over here. Like basically, that's what it does. Like there is, there are some springs in here and there to make it more like a better, yeah, better experience and overall. But the thing that we need to do is slap this Game Boy in, put this thing on, and let's make this thing a freaking arcade machine. But first, the battery nightmare. Okay, so another nightmare if you want to make this thing portable. Here at the back we're going to find the compartment for the four gigantic batteries. We also have a cartridge storage, so that's pretty cool. So you even have the option to bring some extra games with you. So it was a very cool piece of hardware that you can pick up for your Game Boy Classic. But what we're going to do, we're going to plug in the cable that is needed here at the right side. I'm just going to use a universal power supply, a little bit more convenient because I don't have an original one laying around. So let's see, let's plug in the Game Boy and let's see if it can play and how it works. Okay, so there are no batteries inside, we're going to leave Tetris in here. So what we need to do for the audio itself, plug this thing back in the Game Boy. Then we're going to open this up to make it a little bit more convenient. This is for the power for the Game Boy. Alright, so let's plug this freaking thing in. Would be cool if you have like one with a back light or but I don't have it so we're just going to do it like old school. My screen is all scratched up so yeah that's the option I need to live with. Okay so let's plug this thing in but first let's test it. Okay that works. Okay and the light also seems to be working. All right very cool. Let's plug this in. You need to force it down, lock the system and we are ready to go. So let's boot it up and let's play a game. Okay, so let's boot up the system again, just to show you how it works. So basically when you slide up only one time, you're going to get the audio activated. And with the second time, we're going to get the lights activated over there. So let's try to play a game and let's shut down the lights over here to give you like an idea how this thing is going to be playing. You can just basically hold it like the Game Boy. Let's turn off the lights above me. Lights on. Everything is like freaking scratched up. <laughs> the magnifying glass as the screen of the Game Boy. Oh man, good old days. Oh man, that looks really weird on the camera. All right. But somehow my start doesn't work at all. I feel like does work, but I don't know what's going on. Is this more like my Game Boy have an issue? Yep, my Game Boy has an issue. 
Oh man, I need to play my Game Boy, that's one thing for sure. Alright, well, let's... So let's crank it up. Holy shit, the thing goes loud. Dee, 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 dee. Magnifying off. And I must say, that plays really nice with the joystick. Alright, let's put it back on. As a child, I played so much with this thing, like, it's so cool. The only downside is, like, if you try to search one, don't, like, get all excited because these things are, like, super expensive now. Ridiculous amount of money they ask for it. It makes no sense, even in bad condition like this. But let's try in a different game. So every time you basically, like, shut it down, you want to change the game, you need to click it open. I think you can pull out the Game Boy door. The wires aren't long enough. Let's... Oh. <sighs> let's plug it out. Yeah. So let's get myself a different game. Woohoo! Yeah, and that's going to be an issue. So the contact is not going to work very well in combination with the SciTech front cover. Alright, so let's... Ah, oh, crap the cable. Oh, you need to be very careful. Ah, it stopped working! Alright, let's crank up the volume. Oh yeah! Magnifying! Power on! Oh yeah, the first one, that's the, most be that's the best soundtrack. I cannot see a damn thing. <laughs> Yeah, I love man. And even up to today, I love this thing. The only thing I need to do is like, we need to clean up the magnifying glass and then get myself a freaking LCD Game Boy from Funny Playing because that would be like a super cool experience. Oh, that soundtrack! Okay, so let's do a quick teardown just to see how this thing looks in the inside. I'm really curious. Uh, I'm just going to remove some screws because I have no idea how they slap this thing together. I think there are like two screws over here. Then we're going to get two over there. And I'm just curious how this thing will look in the inside. I think this is going to be a lot of plastic fantastic with not a lot of wiring. And I'm also curious if this thing gets broken, if you can fix it. Okay, there is no movement in the shell, so I think I need to remove these two. And hoping not to remove any of those rubbery feet because ooh, they are like very old now. Oh, this one is going to be challenging to reach. Alright. Okay, so I think that was the last one that we needed to remove. This is number six. Question remains, can we open it like this or are there more screws that we need to remove? I think there are no screws in here. Oh, there are. Ooh, they even hid two of them over there. Mm -mm, naughty boy. All right, so well, let's see. We'll remove these two. If we can, basically can remove the shell itself. Ah, there is some movement now. Oof. <laughs> I don't know what just came out of it, but there was a lot of filth and dust in it. <laughs> okay, I need to be very gentle, but it seems to be that there has been an insect inside of this. Alrighty, it's not living anymore, but... Ugh. Like... Ugh. A lot of weird things going on here. Ugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the piece of plastic that I basically just lost here. <laughs> Okay, so the construction wise is quite interesting. So I just need to put it like this. So the two wires that comes from the battery case that makes the six volt in total with the batteries goes also on the PCB. This is just a central PCB that basically connects everything. Okay, so they did a lot of transparent hot glue over here to keep the cables in position. Only not for the power over here. 
Here you can see the cable comes from the bottom part, goes all the way up over here. That is for the audio and the input for the power if you want to use a power supply. I cannot really tell like how many watts these things are, but they have like a pretty big magnet. And I must say the speaker itself, that's the reason why it sounds so good, because there's quite some bass in it. And then we're going to get the second and the last PCB. And this PCB is only for switching between when you want to turn on the lights and stuff like that. But yeah, it's good that I cleaned it up because there was a lot of filth in here. And something has been living in there. It's not living anymore, but... <laughs> Alright guys, so that was the booster from SciTech. It's a nostalgia trip for me and maybe also for you. So let me know in the comments what do you think of this. Is it something you pick up or is it something you don't care about? I think this is a really cool piece of hardware that you can buy for a Game Boy now, even in 2021, if you can find it cheap. Because if you need to pay a lot of money for it, yeah, nostalgia are great, but for a cheap price, this thing is pretty cool to get. But it's more like a piece of tech that you will put for display and something you play with it because it's pretty cool and it works very well. But yeah, in the end, it's really old school. Well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family, and we'll see you in the next video.